Hello, this is Chris Neal from South Plains College. Welcome back to my Pro Tools how-to video series. The following video is on the basics of loop recording audio. So we'll be looking at loop recording with and without the automatic playlist generation. We'll be looking at matching alternates and some other things. As always, you'll see my keyboard shortcuts that I'm using displayed at the bottom of the screen. And here's a key to the symbols that you'll see there. Some other useful shortcuts, promote to main playlist, the matching alternates list, and some track selection shortcuts. So let's get started. First we'll do a quick review again of the headphone setup. We're going to record some lead synth. So we have a lead synth track set up over here. And I've already set up the headphone setup, so I created a send to cue synth. Um, created a new track, which created the aux track over here. I solo isolated and routed it out Q7. And I set it to pre, as we do with all headphones. So we're going to record some lead synth, and we're going to use loop recording with and without the automatic playlist generation feature. So first we'll look at loop recording, where we're going to use the matching alternates list. So we'll go back over to the edit window. We're going to turn off quick punch. So command shift P. We're going to turn on loop record with option L. We can also use the options menu and choose to turn that on and off, or we can right click on the record button and turn that on and off. And we will turn off loop play, command shift L. So we're going to make our selection of the area that we want to loop record over in the edit window. And one thing that we need to be aware of in loop recording and using pre and post roll is that the pre and post roll only are active on the first iteration of the loop. When it loops back around, it's just going to go back into the selection. It's not going to play the pre-roll again. So we need to actually incorporate any pre-roll that we need in this recording in the selection itself. So again, I've got to include my pre and post roll in my selection. So I'm going to go back into grid mode and make my selection in grid mode. That's not absolutely necessary if Pro Tools knows the tempo of the song and so forth and the song has been recorded to a click. I generally like to uh, make selections on the grid when possible. Just makes things a little easier. So we're about ready. I've got uh, two bars of pre-roll and one bar of post-roll set up. And we're in loop record. Record enable the track. And we're ready to roll. So let's hit three on the number pad to start rolling. So there we go. Three takes recorded in loop record mode. We were not using the automatic playlist generation feature that can be turned on with loop record, which we'll look at in a minute. So we have a couple ways that we can deal with this situation. We want to listen back to uh, other takes. The first way we'll look at is we're going to go into spot mode and we are going to open up the clip list and we're going to drag in the other clips to listen to them. So we open up the clip list. There's our master audio file and all of the loop iterations were recorded into this audio file. So we can see the the loops below. There's take one, if you will, loop one, loop two, and loop three. And as we highlight the third one, we see it uh, highlighted out there on the playlist. So we wanted to listen to take one. So we go into spot mode click on it there we can hit F3 as you see below and we're gonna drag and drop it onto the track we don't have to line it up anywhere we're gonna drag and drop it 
we get the spot dialog box down at the bottom. We're going to click on the arrow to the right of the original timestamp, and that will move it back to its original timestamp, which is where it was originally recorded. So we can hit option A so that we can see the whole track. And let's say we wanted to listen to this one. Okay, so now I want to hear take two, so I drag it onto the track. I click on the button next to original timestamp, which moves it up into the start box. I hit OK. That moves it into location, and I'm ready to hear take two. Okay, take three, same procedure. I'm going to just drag it onto the track. I'm going to get the spot dialog box. I'm going to hit the button, the original timestamp, hit OK, and ready to play on take three. Now that method is not the most convenient, so there's another one called Matching Alternates List. And if I right-click on the clip and go to Matching Alternates, I can see a list of my takes. And I can choose another one, and it'll replace the one that's there with Take 1. Or I can right-click and go to Take 2. So much faster than dragging and dropping with uh, Spot Mode. So my matching alternates list had just the things that I recorded there. Now there's a thing called matching criteria. So here's this dialog box, which allows you to set what kinds of files you will see in this list. So I can say only show me things with the same track name, track ID, clip rating. So there's a whole lot of things that you can do there. So if I turn all that off, you see I see all these audio files in my list, which I don't want to see. So I'm going to turn on track name, track ID and clip start. So since I was in loop recording, they all have the same start point. Now they don't have the same start and end because the third one I ended before the full loop iteration, so it doesn't have the same end time, so it wouldn't show up if I chose clip start and end. So I'm not gonna check this one, I'm just gonna have clip start. So with clip start selected, I'm gonna close this and now I can go to my matching alternates, pick my takes, and listen. So... Go back, pick another take, two. Take three. All right, so that's a much better method than dragging and dropping with spot mode, but it can be even a little bit easier if I use the selector tool. And you can't be in the smart tool, you have to be in the selector tool, so F7, or click on it. And then hold command and click on the clip. I'll get directly to that matching criteria list. I don't have to go through a sub-menu, but I get right to that list. As you can see, I'm holding command and choosing my takes right from the list. All right, how about three? All right, so we can see how quick and easy it is to jump between takes using that method. So let's look at the other version of this, which is loop recording where Pro Tools automatically generates playlists for us as it loops around. So we're gonna to go to the setup menu and down to the bottom to preferences and to the operation tab. And over on the right hand under record, we see automatically create new playlists when loop recording. We're gonna check mark that. And what that's gonna do is when we go into loop record with each loop iteration, Pro Tools will create a new playlist for us and put the audio in that loop on that playlist. So one of the things I like to do with this method is to create a new playlist before I even start, like we did in the multi-track playlist version. So just like the other loop recording, we're going to make a selection using grid mode, put two bars of pre-roll in, bar of post-roll, and start recording. All right, so there we go. So we're in playlist view, 
And the first thing I'm going to do is go back to that blank playlist. So the first thing I did was create a new playlist. I'm going to go back to that blank playlist. And this is kind of why I do that to begin with. It's slightly easier to me. So I go back to that. And now I have my playlist and I can audition uh, my playlist from here. Okay, we'll look at how we can audition each take and then also how we can assemble a comp if we need to make up uh, a final version from the different takes. So we can solo up and we can listen. So take them out of record and listen. So now I can just kind of go through and solo up and listen to the takes. So quick and easy to go in and listen and find which takes are the best. Okay, so let's say we decide that none of these is perfect all on its own, so we want to start with take three. So a method that I use for creating a comp is I will select the area that I want to use, and I will separate it using the B key, and then I will promote it to the main playlist. So Control Option V promotes that to the main playlist, or you can use the arrow over there. So then I'll go to the next section, highlight it, select it, B to separate it, and then promote it to the main playlist. So separate and promote. Let's say at the end I want to use this section. I'm in grid mode, but I don't want to be in grid mode. I want to be in slip mode, so I'm going to go into slip mode. I could hold command to temporarily clutch out of grid mode, uh, but I just switched over to slip mode. Okay, so I'm going to get my selection going here. I've got a little selection, so I can hold shift to uh, adjust my selection. B to separate, option control, V to promote. Again, choose the last section, B, control, option V to promote. All right, option A to zoom out. Okay, so there's a quick little comp technique. Again, I like to separate the audio file so I can tell in my final version where every take came from. Generally makes it a little bit easier as I'm looking through all the audio files to spot what things came from what takes. So in a future video, I'll show you how to quickly go through and audition different takes. So if you're working on a long vocal comp, uh, how you can quickly go through that and uh, solo up and hear different takes and so forth. Okay, thanks for watching. See you next time.